he's in a bad mess and he's constantly needing money. 500 here, 500 there, 1,000 here, 1,000 there. He needed $80,000 to replace the equipment. This woman lost everything. It was well over $100,000. I had a mobile home that I rented out. I sold it for $130,000. She depleted her savings to get this man back to the United States from Turkey. I, I want to know if all of this has been real. I mean, he says he loves me. I love him. He wants to make a life with me. I want to know if all that is true. The only resource that I have now is my social security check. He's now promising to pay her back the $150,000 he borrowed through gold bars. And his gold bars are stored somewhere. Stick around as we find out the truth about her online relationship. I so want him to be real. He has told me so many times that he wants to let everybody know that he is who he says he is and that he's not a scammer. Real quick, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hi, Social Catfish. My name is Hetty. I am 74 years old. I live in Florida. I was a nurse for 35 years. My husband and I were married for 22 years. We got married when we were 50. I had been twice divorced and he had been twice divorced. It was the best marriage. He was a wonderful man, a wonderful husband. So much so that my grown children felt like he was their father. Following 23 years of marriage, Hetty's husband peacefully passed away in his sleep leaving her feeling isolated. The person she had loved for so long was suddenly taken away, prompting her to seek activities that would occupy her mind. I never intended to do online dating. When my husband passed away, I was perfectly content to live the rest of my life by myself with my four dogs. Never gave a thought to online dating at all. I mean, it just wasn't anything that I thought about. and. My sister said to me, why don't you play song pop? It'll be a distraction for you. It might help you get through, you know, hard days. So I went on this game song pop and I loved it because there are all different genres of music. And of course it had my doo-wop and I was so into it. Song pop is an online trivia music game. You'll go head to head with random people from around the world. You can speak to your opponent through a chat box, and this is where it all began. And I was playing it for a couple of months when he said, how about the loser has to sing for the winner? And I thought, hmm, well, to do that, he would have to have my phone number, and I'm not giving that out. But I thought he was clever enough to answer him. And we started talking. I mean, only five and a half months after my husband passed away and I couldn't even imagine how it was possible to fall in love with someone, especially so soon. But there was something about this man. He was just so charming and handsome and mysterious. He's got that look. I thought he was handsome. That was, <laughs> there was a physical attraction before he ever said hello. Very cool conversation, very relaxed, very friendly, but comfortable. And, and we were just getting to know each other. Our likes and dislikes. He said he was born in Norway, came to the United States at the age of 12. Do not recognize his accent. It's one that I've never heard before. I have a recording of him speaking to me when he left a phone message and I played it for other people and nobody can figure out what kind of an accent that is. Hey Heidi, I just want to tell you I love you so much. You bring so much joy into my life. All right now, I don't want nobody else. I do really love you from the very depth of my heart, myself. I want you to control me. Use me as a police. I love me like you never loved anyone, just like the way I do. I love you so much, my faith. I love you. Mm -hmm.
And I asked him more than once, I've asked him, what kind of an accent is that? And he says, Mexican. Now, I know a Mexican accent. I live in South Florida. I am constantly speaking to Mexicans. He said, you don't know every Mexican person. You haven't met every Mexican person that's ever been born. So, okay, that's true. And then that conversation was dropped. The two began to chat more and more every day. Arvid was charming and presented himself as a gentleman. He claimed once he was finished with his job, he would be able to come and visit Hetty in person. And getting ready to leave for Turkey for a job. He said he was an architect, but he said he was going there to be laying pipes that apparently he was the team leader and he and his workers were traveling together, laying pipes for the uh, building that was supposed to be built on top of the, the pipes. There was, you know, we constantly communicated before he left. As soon as he arrived, he sent me a picture of himself in the hotel room, said the accommodations were nice, and sent me a couple of pictures of himself on the job as well. Things were looking great. Hetty was prepared to meet Arvid face to face. She was so excited she told her friends and family all about him. He was getting close to finishing his job and would be on his way. But then the unexpected happened. Texted me one day. This was, I don't know, about a month after he was in Turkey. And he said, Turkish Taliban had attacked him and some of his co-workers. They all had some injuries. One of the co-workers wasn't too bad. The other co-worker was in a coma. He himself uh, had a broken arm. They stole his wallet, his phone, his ID, his everything. And would I be able to get him a phone? So I said, sure. And I went to the Apple store and I got him, I think at that time it was a new 13. He wanted me to mail it to some store in California. And he said they would send it in turn to him. I sent the phone to this place in California. And sure enough, he did receive it. Of course, now he, he has no money and the bank won't do anything for him or with him because his ID was stolen. So now he's in a bad mess and he's constantly needing money. And it was 500 here, 500 there, a thousand here, a thousand there. And then he said he can't do the job. He can't pay his workers because so much of the equipment was either damaged or stolen. He needed $80,000 to replace the equipment. The $80,000 had to be sent to this woman who is, who works with this heavy equipment. I wired it from my bank. Then for some reason, my bank thought I was perpetrating a con with the bank. Forbid I would never do such a thing. They dropped me as a customer from PNC Bank. He kept needing more money for, for different things and paying his coworkers and paying for bills back home. I guess mortgage and whatever else you would continue to pay for. We had this hotel bill that was building up. They wouldn't let him leave and he was owing people money. And he kept telling me he was leaving, but then there would be an excuse why he couldn't get on the plane. Hetty sent money for food, water, phones, airline tickets, hotel fees, you name it. At this point, she was funding this man's life. She was running out of money, yet Arvid still had more requests. It was well over a hundred thousand dollars and he was needing so much more. I had 
a mobile home that I rented out. So I sold it for $130,000 and I sent most of it to him for his various needs. One time he actually sent me itinerary. He supposedly he and his workers got on the plane and one of his workers got arrested at the airport in Amsterdam for having drugs said he found it very hard to believe that he knew this guy he didn't think this guy was into drugs somebody could have planted it on him but this was the story he wasn't going to leave Amsterdam while his worker was in jail he needs to acquire an attorney for his uh, his worker and he sent me pictures of him with the attorney uh, you know okay nice Finally, he has a, a, a court hearing, and apparently he had a few. He sent me pictures. He looked like himself, but he looked very drained. He didn't look healthy. He looked like an unhealthy version of himself. So up until recently, I was sending him $500 a month, which I could ill afford um, because the only resource that I have now is my social security check. Hetty had depleted all of her savings. Her bank accounts were in the negative and all of the money she received from selling her mobile home was gone. She did everything she could to help Arvid and it still wasn't enough. This is when she began to have doubts about ever meeting this man face to face. To make matters worse, she found out about another woman Arvid was speaking with online. I discovered that he had been texting and talking on the phone to another woman. And I got suspicious because of something that I had seen on Facebook. And so I contacted her and I asked her if she knew him. And she said, just from Facebook. I said, do you talk to him by phone? And she said, yes. I said, well, how well do you know him? And she said, well, we've been talking for about nine months. I said, were you two supposed to be in a relationship? And she said, yes. And I said, that's very interesting because he and I are engaged. She was upset. Uh, I picked up the phone and called him. It was around midnight for him. I said to him, I just spoke to Noreen. And for a couple of seconds, it was dead silence. And he said, who did you speak to? I said, I just spoke to Noreen Peterson, the woman who you're supposed to be having a relationship with, who has sent you so much money. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anyone named Noreen, but he's not in a relationship with her. And he blocked her from everything. Trusting him completely, Hetty forgave Arvid for everything. The two moved forward and never spoke about the woman again. But this man had even more tricks up his sleeve. He did a job and the people couldn't pay him so they paid him in gold bars. And his gold bars are stored somewhere. And he's trying to raise the money to get the gold bars out so that they could be transported to him. He has to get the gold bars and when he does, that's when he's going to be able to pay me back. As a result of my helping him, I wasn't able to keep up with my mortgage. And so now I'm facing possibly foreclosure. I was served with a foreclosure notice. Since then, all he talks about is wanting to be together, wanting to come here, being so sorry that um, he hasn't been able to. He hasn't asked me for money for a couple of months now. After everything the two had been through, Hetty still wants to believe this man is being truthful about everything. And she's reached out to us to figure it all out. I want to know if he's real. I want to know if he is who he says he is. I want to know if the pictures that he sends me of himself is really him and not somebody else. I, I want to know if all of this has been real, I mean, he says he loves me, I love him, He's he wants to make a life with me. I want to know if all that is true. I have no idea what you might find. I'm praying that you will 
find he is who he says he is, which of course, if, if that ever happens, then he probably would be furious at me for doing this and maybe not want to have anything to do with me ever again because of doubting him. But I hope he is. And of course, that's why I sent him all that money to help him because I'm hoping that everything he said is true. If, if it isn't him, I, I'm going to be devastated. I mean, that's the truth. I have cried many, many, many times over this man. I so want him to be real. He has told me so many times that he he wants to be here to let my friends and, and my church members and, and my children. Um, he wants to let everybody know that he is who he says he is and that he's not a scammer. And that's what I'm praying for. Up until this point, Hetty had sent over $150,000, and she was still contemplating sending more to help him get his gold bars. We dug into all of the information to help put this whole thing to rest. Hetty was able to provide us with a phone number she used to communicate with Arvid, emails, and the website from the courier service that were transporting the gold bars, and several photos of who he claimed to be. We began to research to find answers. If you found yourself in a similar situation to Hetty and you're wondering who is really behind the profile of the man or woman you're communicating with online, email us at sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. If you've made it this far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. We appreciate you so much. A few days later, it was time to sit down with Hetty and go over everything that we had found. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Oh, I don't know. You tell me. How are you feeling? Are you ready for today? Uh, I don't know if I could ever be ready. I'm so afraid of what I might hear, but I'm as ready as I'll ever be. So what's going on with Arvid? He texted me Happy New Year on New Year's Eve, and he texted me again two days ago saying Happy New Year. I don't know. Everything in the beginning that he said sounded so real. He seemed honest, he seemed sincere, and I fell for it. Are you still in love with him? I'm trying not to be, it hurts a lot. Well, today we have answers for you. You know, we dug into everything and we're just gonna let you know what we found. Okay. Well, the first thing we looked into was his phone number and we ran a few searches on it and we found that it's actually a VoIP phone number. It's a what? A VoIP phone number. I don't know what that means. VoIP phone numbers are pretty much disposable phone numbers. You just download an app for free and it allows you to talk to anyone. Oh my, I've had that number for like 19 months. The appeal of those phone numbers is that you can hide your identity. You don't have to show an ID or give any personal information when you sign up for those phone numbers. Okay. Um, oh boy. Why would he have a VoIP phone number after you've bought him phones? I don't know. That was the, the number that he gave me when we first met. And that's the number that continued on his new phone. It does come across like someone is trying to mask their identity in some way. Okay. We looked into the company that you were emailing that was asking yes. for the money, um, and we ran a few searches on their email address. And? Just like the, the phone number, where we couldn't find any social media accounts linked to this, no websites. There was no data to back that this was a email used by a legitimate business. We also ran a Google search on that email, and it led us to a website. Unfortunately, the website was fraudulent, and we also found that there was an address listed on that website. We looked into that address and found that it was linked to other fraudulent shipping websites. Okay. Wow. All these websites are fake, including the one you've been communicating with. None of them are legitimate websites or businesses. Wow. I, you know, I, it just makes me feel so stupid, so foolish. You know, I, I never thought that I could be tricked like this. 
So they use fake emails, fake addresses, fake contact phone numbers to create these websites. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sick inside. Like I want to throw up. I, I fell in love with nobody. Oh, that's so weird. What else are you currently confused about? Um, every time I would say how handsome he was, he would say, thank you, that means so much to me. The one that I love so much thinks I'm handsome. You know, just that kind of crap. Uh, yeah, I would like to see who the real person is. We ran searches on the images he sent us. And we actually found tons of fake profiles using those same images. Okay. We saw names like Wayne, Charles, Jeffrey, Jason, you name it. He had another profile attached to these images and someone was claiming to be various different names. So we finally did get a hit. And this man in these photos is not a man named Arvid. The real man is a Turkish journalist named Martin. Um, well, you know, he did say that he was in Turkey, um, <clears throat> not living in Turkey, but that he had been in Turkey working and supposedly he left Turkey to come back to the States. I said, considering if you came to this country when you were 12, why do you have such a thick accent? Hey, Heidi, I just want to tell you I love you so much. You bring so much joy into my life. All right, now I don't want nobody else. We heard all of the voicemails that, that he's left you and we're very familiar with the accent that he has and that, that is 100% a West African accent. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why he gave you these, these stories and used these images was to get you to send money. This is no doubt a romance scam that you're in. They take stories and elements from the real person's life, like Martin, who's completely innocent, by the way. He's, he's never spoken to you. He doesn't even know we're doing this video right now. All of his photos and his life and his likeness was used to dupe you out of money. Okay. And he said things to me like, um, I want to be there. I want to prove to your family that I'm not who they say I am. Oh my goodness. We think that you should block him and report this scam. It'll be my pleasure to block him. We need to get him to click a, a link. You'll send it to him and when he clicks on it, we'll be able to grab his IP address. Okay. We did end up sending a link to Arvid from our website, fugiftcards.com. When he clicked on it, his IP address came back to Lagos, Nigeria. Over the years, Nigeria has unfortunately gained a reputation for being associated with romance scams. This person had been lying to Hetty for years just to get her to send money. Well, what I was confused about was, is he real? And I guess he's not. Um, God, I wish there was a way to to get my money back. I've really been scammed hard. <laughs> so we're going to come up with a game plan for you um, because of the information that this person has used. Um, it is going to be a long road to retrieving that money, but we can guide you and point you in the right direction and help you get this stuff reported. Um, when I met him, I wasn't looking to meet anybody. Um, because I was a widow for only five and a half months. And it was so soon. And now actually maybe I have time to, to grieve properly over my husband. Because I do miss him terribly. 
I feel like I've shamed him. I feel like I've shamed his name. Um, and to have been so foolish with money. Uh, if he could, if he could say something to me right now, I'm sure it would be, "What were you thinking?" The truth was tough for Hetty, but the good news is we had this person's crypto wallet and IP address. We sent resources to Hetty on where to report this scam. It all starts with a police report. Getting your money back from a romance scam is a long road, but we're going to be here with her to guide her through every step. I'm so thankful because I would have gone on believing and trusting him and wow even though being suspicious i wanted to trust him i wanted to believe him so i'm just really so thankful that i have a concrete answer thank you so much no problem Eddie. talk to you soon okay <laughs> Hetty filed a police report on Arvid. We will next look into the crypto wallets and submit a KYC request and send everything over to the EFCC so authorities can begin to look into this. <laughs>